All communities support their volunteer organizations, which work to uplift the poor, spread their philosophy, and undertake social work. Christians have their missionaries, they run charities in underdeveloped countries, work for the needy, and spread education the Christian way. Sikhs do seva and feed the hungry through langars run out of gurdwaras. Muslims provide free Islamic education to children through madarsas. Hinduism, despite predating all the above religions and individuals engaging in the activities of service to the society, did not have a similar platform for such cooperation and coordination until 1925, when the Rashtriya Samswebak Sangh, that is RSS, was launched by a Maharashtrian doctor, Keshav Baliram Hedgevar, in Nagpur. Swamsevak means selfless worker, and the idea behind the RSS was selfless service to the society, the Hindu way. The founder anticipated the need for strengthening the foundations of Hindu society and preparing it for challenges on social, economic, cultural, religious, philosophical, and political planes. As the RSS celebrates its centenary celebration, let us decode the philosophy behind the organization, how it has maintained relevance over the years. In spite of challenges posed by the malicious campaigns run by biased individuals and institutions alike. Foundations of Nationalism RSS was established to give the nationalist movement a strong cultural foundation, our centuries-old ancient civilization, which were based on tenets of dharma, ahinsa and bhakti, were losing the voice in the clamor of colonialism. Muslims in pre-independence India, despite having the same ancestry and DNA and ethnicity as the rest of the country, were convinced that a pro-caliphate movement called the Khilafat movement best represented their interests. It suited the British imperialist philosophy of divide and rule, RSS thought, and it sought to unite the people of India under a cultural umbrella, under the ages of a nationalist movement, and this did not sit very well with the elitist who had eschewed their cultural identity in favor of aping the West with their foreign education and their exposure to Western values. Turning their backs on their rich heritage, they were schooled to believe that Indian values were primitive and backward, and the country could only be saved by denouncing the Hindu way of life. In fact, so threatened were the leaders of the Indian National Congress that they prohibited their mem members from joining the RSS cadres. Taking pride in one's national identity was the foundation stone of the RSS. Cultural connection. Vinayak Damodar Savarkar, a Hindu nationalist, argued that culturally all inhabitants of this glorious ancient land shared the same cultural identity and ancestry. He promoted the ideology of Hindutva, meaning people of Hind, the land beyond the Indus River. This ideology aimed to unite all these culturally connected people without discrimination on the basis of caste, creed, color or religion. Hindutva included not just the followers of the Hindu religion, but also Atheists, Jains, Buddhists, Dalits, Sikhs, tribals, nature worshippers, and followers of Islam and Christianity. Discipline and development. The very foundation of the RSS is rooted in discipline and dedication inspired by the Vedic traditions. Shakhas or branches sprouted all over the country after the first shakha was established in Nagpur in 1925. They promoted discipline by getting together a bunch of young men in an assembly type of gathering where they engaged in indigenous games, some yoga such as Surya Namaskar and other things, listened to some pravachan which is positive discourse by the learned people and then sang the national song or the Swam Sevak anthem. Quite similar to the system of morning assembly conducted in all schools or educational institutions. There were also discussions on topics of national and international significance, creating an exposure 
for the swamsevaks the participants to align themselves with current affairs and politics the meetings would end with a resounding non denominational cry of bharat mata ki jai or hail the motherland going back to centuries of traditional association of mother earth my grandfather who is a pracharak a senior leader who leads a shakha i would watch him don the attire of the rss khaki shorts with a white vest and the, he would head out early in the morning to participate in the shakha he came back energized and invigorated to face the day united we stand divided we fall the westernized elitist leaders of the indian national congress were busy hobnobbing with the british and disdaining their own history former prime minister jawahar lal nehru's friendship with the imperialist british rulers has been a subject of much discussion and observation what is not common knowledge is the fact that he was able to leverage his associations with the powers that be to get access for his ailing wife in a swiss sanatorium and was released from the jail ahead of completion of his jail term and close to a year while he could accompany his wife for her treatment savarkar and had given both freedom fighters were incarcerated during the war of independence in much worse condition than nehru yet savarkar's incarceration at kalapani has been glossed over as it did not serve the congress narrative of anti national rss nehru's hunger for power and interest to hold on to chair is indicative of the demand for separate homeland for muslims by muslim league rather than seeking space for jinnah at the top it was nehru's actions and jinnah's ambition that promulgated the divide and rule policies of the british and ultimately led to a very bloody partition of india the western media continued to lap up the anti rss rhetoric portraying them as cow worshipping sun bathing heathens the very same ideologies are now finding voice in the west rss was punished throughout the history of independent india for being too nationalist being a nascent organization and its membership composed primarily of middle class hindus rss never had the financial wherewithal to combat the narrative that was set against them by the imperialist powers and the brown sahibs alike foundations of history rss was established to unite the nation and the people of bharat under a cultural flag based on the history and geographic boundaries of this ancient land this was to promote patriotism and a deep sense of pride in our ageless beliefs while grounding ourselves in our own traditions 100 years after the launch of the rss had gave our stance vindicated as the world today accepts that the tenets of hinduism as a valuable resource and people in the west have started to embrace the philosophies of bharat yoga is our biggest export and it is heartening to see yoga day being celebrated in far flung corners of latin america canada europe and australia the enunciation of the hindu divine chant om as the primordial sound has resonated globally medical studies have been conducted to show that a sensation of vibration is created during audible om chanting this has the potential for vagus nerve stimulation through its auricular branches and the effects on the brain thereof vegetarianism is becoming a popular choice to combat global warming and the effects of methane on climate change that have been well documented india's food consumption patterns have been declared to be the most sustainable by a 24 world wildlife fund report and it has been suggested that the world embraces india's eating habits to combat climate change today as the world embraces the bhartiya way of life we owe it to the rss for highlighting the world stage that the traditions that bind our generations or the modern day values as we see how modern day values are engulfing our society rss ideologies are ever more becoming more valuable and 
spreading their wings all across. The fabric of our society is being shredded by drugs, exhibitionism, voyeurism, porn, all social ailments impacting the whole world. It has become even more imperative to embrace the discipline of RSS shakhas, shakhas to impart Indian values and familiarize the youth with Indian culture. Sangh is engaged in many different social activities and the term used for the same is called prakalps. RSS today runs more than a lakh or a hundred thousand of them. The work under these prakalps could vary from cleanliness to climate change, from education to empowerment and from health to water. All these prakalps are voluntary services and have a strong volunteer spirit of the community to back up such activities. RSS has a very strong women's wing. In addition to the presence of women in all these prakalps or service activities, women are organized separately as well under the title Rashtriya Sevika Samiti with its own area of work from Parivar Prabodhan, that is family counseling, to Medhavi Sindhu Srijan, which is women intellectuals. There's not an area of life where a swam sevak or sevika is not present and thus it is only appropriate to say that they are serving Mahabharati or Mother Nation by serving and working in all walks of life. I would conclude by mentioning the Sangh's prayer which describes the innate ability and desire of all swam sevak. Namaste Sadavat Sale Matra Bhume Tavya Hindu Bhume Sukham Vardhuto Aham Mahamandale Punne Bhume Tadarthe Patvashesh Kayo Namaste Namaste. I bow to you, my motherland. You are the one who has provided me with all the luxuries and comforts. I bow to your grace, my pious motherland, and pray that I continue to serve you till eternity. Jai Hind.